Hi guys, welcome to my pretend cooking show. My name is Dina Mitchell and I'm Brittany Larson and this is my kitchen. Prego. Surprise! Hmm, or actually, supli alla telefono. Mm -hmm. This wonderful, most famous street food from Rome, well, it's amazing and the first time I learned about this recipe, I was like, where have you been all my life? Kind of like, you know, the one. This really is the one, and this is fried, and it's made with risotto, and simply alla telefono is because when you take a bite, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like telephone wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It definitely looks yummy. I'll mm -hmm. say that. Awesome. That's one way to shut me up. Just put food <laughs> in my mouth. Wow. So good. Um, this is a street food from Rome. And a lot of people think that it looks like the Sicilian cousin, the uh, arancini, which is the, another rice ball. And that's in Sicily. The difference between these ones is this one is made with tomato. Um, and this one is a lot smaller. So the shape of a pill, but a large size pill. And the arancini from Sicily is actually about the size of a softball, and the name means little orange. So it's a lot larger. This is the first food of the first, first street food of Rome. It's absolutely amazing, originating from like 1880 or so. And um, the guys would roll down the little cart, uh, saying really loud, "Caldo supli, caldo supli." <laughs> it's super yummy, and I have to give a shout out to Chef Pierre in Rome, a French chef at uh, Carmont, who actually showed me this recipe. Mwah. Thank you. All right, let's get to it. Oh, I have to check mm -hmm. in. So, let me check those two. All right, what goes in a souffle? Oh, by the way, souffle, if you guys know, is a French word meaning surprise. So that was the surprise is the mozzarella that, that came in it. So we're using risotto, and typically this would be the risotto that you had the night before, but I'm gonna show you a quick way to make it. This is one of my favorites. I do order it online. Um, and basically, for a good risotto rice to use is the, the carnioli, which is this one, or this is a little bit more common, the uh, abaro. And, and this one I actually got at Home Goods for like eight bucks, and there's a lot of it in there. You can find a lot of good stuff at Home Goods, actually. Yeah. A lot just, of good stuff that she talks about. Just check the expiration date. We're also using my mama's tomato sauce, of course. Alternatively, you can use passata, which is basically tomato puree. We are using mozzarella and not the really wet kind, so you want like the harder one. And it's cut into cubes. We're using garlic. We're going to press it. We're using fresh basil, which we cut up. We're using guanciale which is pork cheek. It's basically a similar to bacon, except for this comes from the cheek and the bacon comes from the belly. This is great stuff. Um, I've actually ordered online from Grassroots, or you can ask your butcher. We're using pecorino and then salt and pepper, some wine, some Calibrian hot pepper. This is the hottest pepper that I've ever tried. And I like spicy. This is amazing if you can get your hand on the Calibrian spicy pepper. All right, a little bit of olive oil, and then to fry it, we're using, obviously, eggs. This is my favorite eggs, pasture-raised, organic. Um, this is my favorite fry, and it's a panko, and I actually got this at Whole Foods. I, I don't remember where else you can get it at, but just, I was gonna just try it and see which one. Um, and then flour. So this is my favorite flour, gluten-free flour from Italy, and this one's made with a blend of rice, and I believe, well, it's a blend of rice. It's too small, I can't read it right now. <laughs> but if you can't get your hand on the caputo, which you can find on Amazon, then this one is good as well. So you're looking for a gluten-free flour without the xanium gum, because you don't need it to rise. So this is another one, uh, King Arthur's gluten-free flour. Again, look for no xanium gum. All right, let's get started. You know I want to take another bite of that, right? So in this, in this pan, I have the guanciale. And I'm gonna put the description, I'm gonna put all the, the amounts and the grams and such in the description along with the recipe. So we have 150 grams of guanciale cut into little pieces along with the Calibrian chili. 
and one tablespoon of olive oil. Do you need olive oil with guanciale? Not necessarily, but as I learned from my, from, from my good friends at Armando's in Rome, it adds a little bit of really good flavor if you add it in. So just a tablespoon, that's it. They put in their carbonara, just so you know. Breaking the rules, but for good reason. So I have it in there, and I put it in there for about three minutes until it crisp, gets crispy, and then I'm gonna hit it with a splash of white wine. And this, just so I don't waste my good stuff, this is good cooking wine. I'm so excited to try this. <laughs> it smells so good. <laughs> you guys should be here to smell her whole house. I like a house that smells good. Okay, and now I'm gonna add the risotto. So I'm adding, I think it's 200 grams, which is a cup of the risotto, along with the garlic. So actually, let me do my garlic now. And I'm gonna press it in, and alternatively, you can just chop as well. This is really easy. You can, um, here's the other, I know I say that a lot, but you can pre-make these ahead of time and then just throw them in the fryer uh, as you wanna make them, and you can, just, you don't have to have a, a regular fryer, you can just have a, a pan with like two cups of neutral oil in there too. But I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so I put three cloves of garlic in there and I'm gonna add the risotto. Perfect. And add these to the fryer. And I'm gonna let this go. It's gonna be about three minutes. I'm gonna toast the risotto. So again, this is gonna add some great flavor. Remember, we put the wine in there with the guanciale. And guanciale, by the way, is also made with, I think I told you, the carbonara. Um, this suppli alle telefono uh, is actually, because we're using the guanciale, uh, this makes it more of a, a, a martrigiana. <laughs> and I know I'm probably messing that up, but a martrigiana uh, recipe. And if, if you know, that is one of the most popular, or one of the popular recipes, or pasta recipes of Rome. And basically it means tomato and bacon. So, let's get back to here. I learned so many things when I'm over here, mm -hmm. as she's teaching me all these recipes, even like how to say things, I, I love it. <laughs> she's much better at punctuation than I am. I've already did the olive oil, I've already done the eggs, I'm just trying to clean my space. The guanciale, i have already done this one. And, tomato sauce Let's get this ready and if you guys you don't if a lot of you have made mama's tomato sauce thank you thank you for trusting me because it's absolutely amazing it's so versatile I can throw it in so many recipes and I had to throw it in this one and again you can just buy the passata which means basically it's like a tomato puree or tomato puree or just use a tomato sauce if you want we're just looking for that rich flavor um, and this back here is on medium heat, and it's almost ready. I'm just looking for a good toast. It just takes about three minutes. Let me make sure I have everything. Salt and pepper, yep. Okay. I think this looks about good. And I just, like I said, I just wanted to toast the risotto a little bit. And this is a fast way of making risotto, guys. It's not really the proper recipe where you put in a half a cup at a time and let it soak up and expand. Um, this is a recipe that it's just a quicker version because we are making suppli al telefono. Um, but again, if you have leftover risotto, which is usually what this is for, you can do that. And there's some great versions of this too. Cacio pepe. Um, suppli, super young. So now I'm going to add the tomato sauce. I'm going to do half, like a one and a half cup, or like half the size of the bottle. I'm going to shake it up that way, get all that tomato sauce in there. And I'm going to add that. And I'm gonna add the fresh basil. And 
and salt and pepper. Yeah. And I am gonna let that reach a boil. As soon as it reaches a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to medium low heat, put the lid on and check it, right? You're gonna stir it, it you know, like every like five minutes or three minutes, you're gonna cook it as long as it says on your package to cook the risotto. So the one that I'm using, I end up doing about 20, 22 minutes, but just try it. You're looking for al dente. Super great. So as soon as it reaches a boil, put the lid on. The last three minutes is when you're going to throw in the pecorino and then stir it in and it's just gonna give you like a really creamy texture. Once it's done, take it off the heat, cool it, put it in a pan, put it, cover it, and put it in the refrigerator, which I have here because I made this last night. And now, the assembly, the fun part. Let me check this. I'm gonna turn this down. These are so easy to make and so much fun. So, I am going to take a big tablespoon of the risotto with the tomato sauce and I'm going to cup it in my hand. These look pretty good. About like this. Mm -hmm. And I am going to, I have the cheese cut in like little rectangles and you're probably going to end up using about eight ounces of the cheese. And now all I'm going to do is just close it up and I just want to make sure it's a little tight, a little tight, little pill form, right? Have you? Like a little rectangle. And I just want it to hold form when I put it in the fryer. And then, you guys, these look so good. So <laughs> I'm gonna roll it in the gluten-free flour. And then I'm gonna, oh, roll it in the gluten-free flour. I didn't make sure that one was very firm. All right, and then the egg. And then, the, the gluten-free panko. And I wanna just make sure it's a little square again. Can you give me the towel? Yes. All right, so that is ready to throw in the fryer. Actually, let me dip this. Rinse off really, really quick. Cool, all right. And just to give you an idea, this is one that we have pre-made. So super easy, you can make these last night. Can make these the night before. And again, just dip it into the flour. And this one's a lot easier to work with because it's been chilling. And then the egg, and then the gluten-free breadcrumbs, and then in the fryer or in a frying pan with two cups of neutral oil. I like to mix it uh, part neutral oil and olive oil, half to half or three quarter to half for five minutes. Can you open that for me? Yes. I'm gonna throw these ones in. Go ahead and close it. And We've tested this on, let me get over here really quick. We've tested this on the air fryer and it really didn't work out that well. You can try baking these if you want, uh, but really this is, this is street food. So, which means they take out all the calories, the carbs and the fat. So when it's street, real street food, um, <laughs> Lying. So, <laughs> all street food super good. Street tacos, different churros from all different places. Yep, this is Rome street food. Exactly. So, this is the best part. Now I'm gonna really share this with you. So excited. So, the idea is that when you bite into it, it gives you a little surprise. Like supposedly the name came from Napoleon when he was in Rome, and he tried these little rice balls, and he was. Soupli! Surprise, <laughs> because the little cheese was in there. Let me show you how this is. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> yep. Mm. The cheese is so good. So please, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right guys, so you can get like an up close of that. It's super yum, super easy to make. The risotto is nice and moist in there with the cheese, it's so good. And the tomato, 
And that's what I really love about this is like all the flavors just really absorb from the tomato sauce and the basil, a little bit of garlic. Alternatively, you can use onion. And the outside's super uh, crunchy and that's my favorite like we mm. talked about. You can also make these with a ragu, a light ragu. Um, mm. You can put whatever you want into these. This is yours to please. Anyhow, my name is Dina Mitchell. This is Brittany. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> Thanks for joining my pretend cooking show. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>